metamorphosis, a change of the form or nature into a completely different one by natural or supernatural means. What if one day you found out that everything you knew, your whole life, your friends, your family, was a lie? What would you believe if you were suddenly able to see the truth, the truth of the world, of what people are, of what you are, or what you once were? What would you do? These are questions that some might find to be preposterous, but not to Lena. She was forced to answer these questions when she discovered her reality was a lie. She had perceived reality as we currently do. No monsters, no supernatural beings, nothing that we consider to be impossible. But then she discovered the truth when she made a special helmet. The truth being that she couldn't see what everyone else could see. Intentionally or not, they had lied to her. She had been blinded. Her eyes had deceived her. But the helmet would allow her to see the real world. It allowed her to see the animals and creatures that roamed the world. It allowed her to see that there were catacombs hidden underneath every government building. Now that she could see the truth, she made a decision to uncover all the secrets that were hidden from her. And some of these secrets would uncover the truth of who she really was. This is the analysis of Psychopomp Gold. Oh my god, I just want to apologize right now. I'm pretty sure I got sharp throat, so my voice sounds like I'm a dying turtle. I, I, I'm sorry about that. Anyway. In order for you to understand the final analysis and meaning of this game, you must first understand the order of events that takes place. A summary, if you will. I'm only going to be analyzing slash discussing the important and main things within the game, because if I went over every little thing, this video would be an hour long. Also, I recommend playing the game first to more thoroughly understand what I'm about to discuss, because this game is, is certainly abnormal. You can play the free version on Steam. So, let's begin. Venna has begun her quest to uncover the secrets that have been hidden from her, and she first starts out at a sewage plant. At first, everything is of the ordinary. The sewage plant looks and acts as a normal sewage plant should. The machinery is all in order, adding chemicals to chemicals to remove chemicals for human consumption. But this is just what Venna would normally see. With the help of her helmet, her eyes see the truth. In the back of the plant, there is an elevator that leads to the catacombs. But why? Why hide away what is down there from her? That question will be answered later. For now, Venna enters and dives down into the catacombs below and what she finds is sickening. Beneath the sewage plant, the truth is revealed. Underneath, there are creatures that feed off of human byproduct. They funnel it to their queen who provides flesh and milk for them. These creatures are filth. They are parasites who cannot survive without feeding off of others. They feed off of their queen and then execute her at the end of her cycle. But, as the cowards they are, they ask Venna to do it for them, which she does. On her way to release the guillotine, she stumbled across a hidden passageway that holds an emerald key. In each level, there is an emerald key that we collect, but these will not matter until we've collected all of them. Anyway, scattered across the planet, we learn of three things that increase our understanding of the world and of who Venna is exactly. Firstly, we encounter creatures called Thraits. They're friendly looking creatures who vaguely resemble humans who dress up in fursuits. Not much is uncovered about them, except that they are scavengers who live underground. Secondly, we find a note, presumably written by Venna. It describes how she feels awake and real now, and that something good has happened. We can reasonably assume that she is referencing when she first put on her helmet and when she can finally see reality for the first time. The third thing is a letter addressed to a doctor discussing an event or object of cosmic level proportions. While this message is confusing now, some light will be shed on it later. Just keep it in the back of your mind. After this, there's nothing left to do except pulling the lever and executing the queen. Once she is dead, an egg of the earth appears in front of her corpse. Venna collects it, and her time at the sewage plant is complete. She sends the egg down, down, into the world, where it will remain until her quest is complete. 
that it leaves the plant and moves on to the next area, a children's hospital. The same pattern is followed here that was implemented for the sewage plant. On the surface, the hospital is normal. Normal rooms, normal walls. But, like before, the helmet allows Venna to see the elevator that will take her behind the scenes to see the truth. And the truth here is terrifying. Beneath the hospital are where the VIP guests are kept. Important, influential figures throughout history, like Alexander the Great or Cleopatra, being kept alive by siphoning life matter from other normal patients above. They are a pile of biological flesh, an abomination upon Mother Nature. They are not life. They are man-made horrors. And so, Venna does the right thing and executes them. We uncover another three things in this level. The first, of course, is the Emerald Key. The second is that the moon is alive in some sort of way. It resembles a red eye glaring down upon the Earth. This could be a connection with the note we found in the sewage plant about how the Earth might have lost mass and that something, not the moon we know, hangs in the sky. We don't have enough information to draw a concise conclusion, though. The third thing is another paper attached to a wall, this time being a scientific slash religious discovery. This paper discusses how there was once two enigmatic figures, Kvenish Vishneri, the Queen of Venus, and Krushner Colvin, King of Mercury. This is how we discover Veda's name. However, not all of the pieces are set in place yet for this to be officially her. The paper also mentions how Venus and Mercury are fictitious planets, meaning that in this universe, they don't exist. That's only according to the paper though, and more light will be shed on this in a bit. I would like to say, I, I know I keep saying we'll come back to this later, and we will. Unfortunately, most of these pieces don't fit in the place until the end of the game, so I apologize for that. Anyway, once all of the VIP guests are executed, Venna collects another egg of the earth and sends it down. The third and final level of the first area is a public school. Same as before, the top is normal, but the elevator leads to the catacombs below, an artery that flows into the heart. Beneath the school is a factory that produces enamel that is applied to children above so that they may speak new words. However, when a child has outlasted their use, the factory also recycles them, melting them in the slag and turning them into butter knives and egg slicers. What I just said will make no sense to you at this point, but it will shortly when we progress further through the game. Anyway, the head of the factory asks us to kill him, so we do, no questions asked. Here we only uncover two things, one is the Emerald Key, and the second is another paper discussing how children see stars adults see darkness, and the dead see light. This paper is foreshadowing about information we'll learn at the end of the game. Anyway, we crush ahead of the factory like he asks, and we collect the third egg. Past this point is completely new content, so if you already played the original version of Psychopomp, pay closer attention now, as all of this is new information. After collecting the egg, we descend deeper into the earth, unlocking two new levels, the first one we visit is a place called Hard Structures. There isn't really an area at the top like with the others, it's just an empty street with big buildings. There is, however, an elevator, and of course, we descend. The elevator is like the throat of a building. Once in the catacombs, the world is no longer made of dirt and stone. It is made of red flesh and red cement. The buildings here are living creatures. As we learn from a building bed, the young buildings have a bad case of silkworms, and we're tasked with killing them all by collecting the pesticides scattered about the map. We do so, traveling up and down fleshy buildings while they try to speak with us through graffiti and using black mold to reproduce. We collect the materials easily, also getting another emerald key, and kill the moths. Then we go and collect the fourth egg, an easy and not necessarily important level. On to the next area we go, which is called Instructions. This area is much more important. Like before, the up top area has nothing of interest except the elevator. When we reach the catacombs, we enter into a vast chasm filled with clay allays and bits of DNA. It is here that we learn how all living creatures are made, born of clay and given predetermined instructions. 
everything is decided here. Everything that has happened to them and everything that they have ever done, it was all decided here. Every disease and biological code is stored in the library so that they can be remembered forever. All of this is where life originates from. At least the software and code for life. To collect the egg in this area, we must inject harmful DNA into a sentient teratoma that is blocking our way. And so we do. We collect our emerald key as well and go to collect the egg. However, we apparently messed up when injecting the malignant DNA. Apparently, we were supposed to make sure that the injection was local and not global, as the teratoma was connected to the flesh of this DNA area called the primordial information, which is either what makes the DNA or what stores it. Considering that this place has a library for DNA though, it's most likely the first option. Anyway, after completely ruining how life is made, we collect the second to last egg and descend to the final layer of the earth slash game. There is only one location here, symbols. The final egg lies within. Unlike before, there is no starting area and there is no elevator. Almost as soon as you begin walking, the walls around you pull themselves apart and you are exposed to the oldest part of the kingdom, where the bits and pieces we have learned over the course of the game begin to finally come together and make sense. The egg in this area is blocked by four symbols, and in order to get past them, as a symbol creature describes to us, we must come to understanding with this world and what makes it. And so we explore, speaking to symbol people along the way. A quick interjection, at this point I will begin analyzing and putting pieces together while I summarize the rest of the game, as it makes it easier to understand what I'm talking about as I'm describing it. Anyway. In this area, there are four paragons, one of people, one of flesh, one of concepts, and one of symbols. These paragons share with us knowledge of how the world works. For example, the paragon of flesh tells us that it once flew over the land, giving vigor to muscles, and that the meat is our soul's given anchor. The other paragons give similar information about their specific area of expertise. However, it only pertains to the way the world works. This analysis is focused on Vena, who she is, what she was, and where she came from. And so for us, the symbol people, or person, gives us more interesting information. One of the symbol people enlightens us about the creation of matter. It says that matter is created of four aspects, and that those aspects were made from the original two thinkers, who then harnessed their raw energy violence into the world. The original two thinkers is referring to the Queen of Venus and the King of Mercury that we discovered in the paper we found back in the children's hospital. The four aspects are most likely the four paragons. Speaking of the four paragons, in order to understand the world, like the first symbol person said, we have to kill them. They don't put up a fight though. Anyway, we collect the final emerald key before taking down the barriers and collecting the last egg of the earth. And with that, the entrance has been unlocked. The entrance to the center of the earth. A Mariana Trench that leads us to a question. In the trench, we go through a portal into the throne of the queen, a sacred place that holds the sacred dermis that she shed when entering her great metamorphosis. The dermis is that of a dragonfly. So, knowing this, this woman is the queen of dragonflies. But who is she specifically? Well, the next area gives us that great answer. The next area being the center of the Earth. Symbols flying around the sphere, four platforms for the four aspects leading into the center pedestal, and on the pedestal is the life meat of the world. And from it, Vena makes her child from ash and clay. Her next task is to awaken its siblings, and so she undergoes a change. She changes form into a completely different one, one that is not of humans. Metamorphosis. Venna sprouts her wings. The queen of dragonflies has awoken. A zoom into the face of Venna reveals that there are symbols attached to her helmet. Most of these symbols are foreign, but one of them is recognizable. The circle with a protruding cross. The symbol shown to us in the paper we found in the children's hospital. The symbol of the Queen of Venus. She takes flight, and the main game is finished. All along, she was the creator of this world, 
of the creatures and DNA and symbols that inhabited it. She was their ruler, their queen, and now she has returned to her true form to begin a new journey, one that we do not yet know of. Though so maybe, we will find out in the sequel. That was the main analysis of the game, or at least it was the concrete one. There is so much more content in this game that I could do a whole other analysis, not of Venna, but of the world that she created. Well, uh, co-created. Remember the Emerald Keys we were collecting? Well, they allow us to collect a secret ending. By going to Venna's home, and going deeper into her home, we eventually reach an area of nature. In this area, there are two beings, one black and one white, yin and yang. However, in this case, it is the King of Mercury, the Black, and the Queen of Venus, the White. In their conversation, Veta makes fun of Mercury for liking nails and says she prefers hammers more. They also discuss bugs, and Veta says she likes dragonflies, but Mercury likes beetles. They banter back and forth, and Mercury says beetles could beat dragonflies. Veta says to bring it on, and then the screen fades to white. Finally, a diagram of the solar system is shown, with X's placed on top of the sun and planets, except for Mercury and Venus. We'll return to this later. For now though, there is one last concrete part of the game to analyze, and that is the epilogue. The game resumes where it left off, with Veta flying away. However, when she flies, she breaks through a screen and red text says the connection is lost. It then says it has found a new host and it is time to wake up. We then wake up as a new character, one with an abstracted face. Who is this person? Well, it is the King of Mercury. We know this because instead of having a hammer as a weapon, he wields a nail. In the secret ending, the person speaking with black text, Mercury, says he likes nails. So, it is reasonable to assume that this person is the other deity that created matter with Venna. He is Krushner Colvin, King of Mercury and Beetles. This is the last piece of the game that I can analyze with evidence. Everything else that I could review would have holes in the analysis, which would make it a theory. However, there are still some pretty important stuff to go over, but remember, these are theories that I'm about to say, and they might have some evidence or no evidence, and are based off of my interpretation and opinion of the game. Anyway, let's analyze three things. The first one, that is home. In my opinion, I don't believe that this is literally her home. At least everything past the starting point. When we first loaded to her home, we spawn in a bedroom. However, when we go through the doors that require emerald keys, we enter areas that are not part of her home. I believe that these areas are instead her mind. Think about it. The first area is a factory-like place, which I believe to be the helmet. Then the next area is a place of forgotten memories because of the graffiti on the walls. Then you have things such as libido and other 2D creatures. Then you get to an area made of meat, and then you reach the yin and yang area. What is the only way we would know of this conversation? Either in Venna's or Mercury's memories. Ergo, this home is a metaphor for Venna's mind. Again though, no concrete evidence, it's just a theory. Moving on to the second thing, the Caldman 4. After completing the game, we unlock access to a forbidden location, which is just a library with a paper inside. This paper talks about four objects hurling through space, creating a veil behind them that completely blocks out all the stars. The paper from earlier in the factory talking about how there are no stars now makes sense. These objects were responsible for that. However, we also can see these objects by visiting an aberrant location called the Ancient Future Place. In this area, there are four floating asteroids, with the biggest one having a drawing of Venna and Mercury on it. This means that the Caldman 4 have a connection to the two deities, though what the connection is, I could not say. Maybe it was sent by them, or maybe it was how Venna arrived on Earth. Just a theory. Now, the third and final thing. The epilogue. The epilogue as a whole is self-explanatory, it's just the very end that is confusing. Mercury is instructed by the King of Dogs to gather associates to discuss what to do about the impending doom that is coming from the bloodied earth. And that is what is confusing. 
When the associates are collected, a bright light appears in the sky above the earth in the distance, shaking the land and causing your screen to glitch. What is the bright light? Well, looking at it closer, it doesn't originate from the Earth's surface. It appears above it, which means it could be the Kalman 4, and we are currently in the past before it had hit the Earth. But the thing makes the world you're on shake, so that means it's here on this planet. It's confusing, but a much easier and simpler explanation is that it is just Veta ascending from the Earth. Still though, there is no way to be sure, so it's just a theory. And there you have it. This was my general analysis of Psychopomp Gold. Like I said, there is a lot more stuff in this game to dissect, like who the King of Dogs is, and how the Thrape people worship Veta. So if you want me to make another analysis video tailored to the fine details, like the video and let me know down in the comments below. Also, while I know that this analysis is far from perfect, and I most likely miss some stuff that helps explain the game in more detail, I hope that this analysis was better than the one I did on the original game. I, I am sorry about that video and the take I took on the game. I, I was just dead wrong. Hopefully, I didn't waste a second chance. Thank you for watching, and remember, there is a Mariana Trench under every town.